Hey, what's up, Disc Golf fam? Hey, today's video is about dyeing discs using glue as a medium. I wanted to take a look at some of the different nuances between clear glue and white glue, and my preferred method on getting some really cool swirls in the discs that I do. Okay, what you see here is an example of some of the stuff that I use when I'm doing my, my swirls uh, using the glue method. Um, first, I want to point out that the, the stuff that I'm talking about today, none of this is original content. I didn't come up with this. Uh, the biggest reference that I got from this was actually The Difference Is Doing It, the YouTube channel. Um, they did a video hosting Brian Eckert. Uh, he does a, amazing work. He has a lot of really cool discs. He has an Instagram. I'll, I'll post those videos in, in his Instagram down below so you can check him out. Okay, so jumping straight in. Uh, the glue that I use uh, is whatever I can get my hands on. Any type of clear glue, um, whether that's Elmer's, this is Craftsmart that I get from Michael's. You can use Amazon Basic uh, clear glue and any type of clear glue is fine. I've got the school glue up here from Elmer's just as a reference. Um, I'll show you why you might, may and may not want to use that. Um, I also have my dyes up here. I use Pro Chem, uh, but you could use I Dye Poly. Those are both powder dyes. Um, you're going to mix those with acetone, which is why I have this up here. Uh, if you're mis mixing those with acetone, you need to put them in glass containers. Um, if you put them in plastic, the acetone will eat through the plastic and then it leaks everywhere. It's a giant mess. So make sure you have some glass containers. Uh, I got these at Hobby Lobby, but you could probably get those on Amazon for pretty cheap. Um, the ratio is about a quarter teaspoon of dye, and then I fill up the rest of the jar with acetone. Um, I also have a toothpick and a skewer here. Uh, you're going to need something to be able to swirl things around in the glue. So whatever you got lying around is fine. Um, I've got a straw. You may want to blow some of the some of the dye around in the glue. So this is just a McDonald's straw. If you have an airbrush, super cool. I don't have one, so I'm just doing the, the poor man's route of using a straw. Um, you're going to need a dropper of some kind. I got these from Hobby Lobby. Uh, they're pretty cheap, um, but it's a glass dropper. If you get the plastic ones, that'll work. Uh, but they're not going to last very long and these you just rinse them off with acetone and, and they're, they're going to last forever. Um, cotton balls or q-tips if you're going to be cleaning off your discs. Uh, if you want to wipe this disc uh, and get rid of the stamp, um, use acetone. That's what these are for, the q-tips. And I've got a blowtorch here um, so that I can pop any of the bubbles that, that end up coming out in my glue. Um, and I've got Aluminum foil here just as a placemat so I don't get dye everywhere and then paper towels. You got to have paper towels All right, that's as that's it as far as the dye now. We'll move into uh, the, the next point Okay, so moving right along we're going to take the stamp off of this disc first We're just gonna use a cotton ball get it wet with some acetone If you've never seen this it's nothing super special, but we're just gonna wipe this off and you can see it kind of disappearing there, right? So we're gonna do that first. Okay, so I just got done wiping this all off with acetone. You can still kind of see the ghost stamp of where it used to be, uh, but the stamp itself is actually the stamp itself is actually done. Um, something else I just did as well is I took this to the sink and I washed it off with Dawn soap. Um, whether you're gonna wipe the disc off, uh, the stamp off or not, you still need to wipe it off at least with some Dawn soap. Uh, the magic erasers, a lot of people say that if you've got some real hard uh, stains on there or if it's real greasy from the factory, you can use the magic erasers. I've always just used Dawn soap and a scrubber and it comes off just fine. Okay, so you've got your disc cleaned off. The stamp is wiped if you want to, or if not, it's cleaned off at least with Dawn soap. The next step is you're going to go ahead and pour your glue. Uh, the best thing that I would recommend is let this sit for a while after you buy it because it's gonna have some bubbles in there. Um, so if you let it sit for a while, it's gonna help uh, you know, settle those bubbles. You're gonna pour your glue in, and you don't need it to be completely full, uh, like as far as the Frisbee goes. Um, you just need it to fill like the bottom section of the disc itself. 
And then if you happen to see any bubbles in there, you would go through right now and go ahead and pop them to get them out of the way. Uh, I've let this sit for quite a while now so it doesn't have any bubbles in it. And when I just poured it, it didn't come out with any. So now our glue is poured. Okay, now we're now we're ready to go ahead and start. Um, before we get into, I, I'd like to say that I uh, I usually I usually fill up one of these glass containers with um, some acetone, and I just label it rinse acetone. Pro tip: when you're filling up your containers, you should mark the top of the container with what color it is. I've got Pro Fuchsia for Pro Chem. That's the dye, and then Fuchsia is the color. And then on the jar itself, I actually do label uh, Pro Fuchsia as well. You have to get it at the right angle because it's a darker color, but it does say fuchsia right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. You can do whatever pattern you want when you're dri when you're dripping, um, but you just need to kind of mix out the colors however you want to. Okay, now we've got our, our colors dripped in here and you can see the different, you know, the different spots where it actually dripped in. So the big thing you want to do when you, after you drip is that you want to uh, keep in mind where some of your colors that you drip. So I know that I dripped my black in a couple of different spots and I definitely want to mix that up and that'll give me some contrast in my swirls. Um, but the other big thing is you don't want to leave any of these big spots, like any of these big drips. You don't want to leave them alone. All of that stuff needs to be spread out. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can swirl this around. Um, I like the figure eight pattern, so what I'm gonna do is a figure eight. Um, something that you do wanna keep in mind is if you have too many swirls in one area, it's gonna start looking blurred. So if you see a lot of really tight swirls together, um, then you need to change that up and start moving around in a different way so you don't end up blurring the, the stuff. So I'll stop right here. You can kind of see, you see in this area, there's a lot of swirls already happening. Um, so I don't want to keep swirling all of this stuff because it's going to end up being blurred. So I'm going to try to skip around that and just try to get the rest of this stuff. Okay, so there's our basic going through and everything's been hit with a swirl, but you can still see some of the, the thicker colors that are over here on the edges. Um, and if you happen to have some in the center, that's completely cool. You just need to, uh, what Brian Eckert uses is meander around in some of those uh, spots to mix up the colors even more. Okay, so there we go. 
Now, so you can notice I, I didn't end up using the pink and the, uh, the Pro Chem Iris. Um, usually I like to stick with just using like two or three colors, maybe four. Um, but when you start getting too many colors, it can start being a little too complicated and just be too much. Um, so I don't know if you can see, I've got a bubble right there that I need to take care of. Um, but let me do a little quick once over. I don't really like how this is pulled up over here. So I'm going to swirl that a little bit just to kind of mix things up. And then over here as well. Okay, so I'm kind of liking that. Um, so now we're going to take our torch. Um, and this is something you need to be careful, careful with. You can burn the glue or the dye that's on top. Um, and then whenever you put your disc in, you're actually going to have like a little burnt spot. So that's not good. You need to not do that. So I'm just going to hit this enough to where it pops this one little bubble right here. And you can kind of see how that messed with the dye a little bit. Okay, so another thing that I like doing after I pop the bubbles and the dye, um, the spots that I hit, uh, it does seem like it kind of messes with it a little bit. So I like to kind of re-swirl over in that area. Which you have to be careful with because anytime that you're swirling, you're introducing the opportunity for more bubbles to form. So you just got to be careful when you do your last little one through. <clears throat> okay, at this point, you are ready to go ahead and drop your disc. So it's super important that your disc is clean. So go ahead and hit it, with, like I said, with Dawn Soap. Uh, and that, that'll be enough to take all the oils and stuff off, off of it. So the way that you want to drop this is at kind of somewhat of an extreme angle uh, from, if you're doing it from this side, like imagine I'm sitting it in, you're going to sit it in kind of like this, and then you're going to roll it down into the glue. And that's going to help you not get the different air bubbles on your plastic. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so we got it placed in there. Um, after you have it put in the, the glue, um, something else that you can do is you can push down the sides a little bit so that the glue comes up and meets the edges. If you're using like a mid-range or a putter, I like to do that. It's not completely necessary um, just because it's gonna sink down into the glue a little bit and come up to the edges anyway. And then also when you push down on the glue, it's going to disperse some of that glue that's inside of there. So it might end up blurring it a little bit. Um, when, if you do it really quickly, as soon as you set the disc in there, you're not going to see any type of uh, blurring, though. It'll, it'll be fine. Okay, we've got the disc placed in there, so now it's just the waiting game. If you're, if you're doing this technique where you're using the Pro Chem and the Acetone, you drip it straight onto the glue, um, then you're going to need to wait somewhere between 8 and 12 hours. Uh, different methods are going to require you to wait up to 24 hours. Depending on the plastic type that you use, you might have to wait up to 24 or 48 hours. As long as you're sticking to a premium plastic like Star or ESP or like a 400 or 500G series plastic from Prodigy, uh, that level of plastic or that type of plastic, 8 to 12 hours, it, it's going to be done. So whenever this is done, I'll pull it out and we'll, we'll reconvene when I pull it out and show you the results. Okay, so while we're waiting on that disc to do its thing and for it to soak up all of the dyes and get some cool swirls, uh, I wanted to show you guys a comparison of the white glue versus clear glue in terms of how the swirls look different. So this is just straight white glue, nothing's mixed with it, and uh, clear glue. Um, so I've got yellow here. This is one of the big things that I wanted to point out. If you're using clear glue, this is one of the downsides of it. So I've got a couple drops in here, and then I'll put a couple drops in the white glue. Okay, so this is slightly misleading because you can kind of see the yellow that's over here, but when you're using a Frisbee, uh, if it's like a blue or a green Frisbee like I have, um, to pour your glue in, 
uh, you're not going to be able to see these drops. It's going to show up as like essentially clear. So you're going to have to either just trust that you know there's there's a die there and that you need to swirl the spot that looks like it's clear, um, or if you get down at an angle, you can kind of see the oil slick on top of the glue, and that can help you. Whereas with the white glue, I mean, you can clearly see that that's yellow, right? Okay, so I'll put down some of this scarlet as well. In both, you can see it comes up just fine in the clear glue, no problems. Really the only thing issue that I've seen uh, with colors showing up is, is yellow. I mean, that's the only one that I've had so far that doesn't show up very well. But here's the, here's the thing I wanted to point out. If you're just using straight mix, especially with the white glue, uh, let me show you what it looks like when you start to swirl these. See, I get these long swirl lines with the clear glue. It's, it like displaces very well and it follows my skewer as I'm going through and swirling, right? Okay, so we switch this over and do the white glue and see if you guys, let's see if you guys can tell. So it actually looks like it's swirling fairly well. Um, a lot of the tests that I've done with it, um, I mean, if you, if you can kind of see that it pulls back slightly, it recedes. It's kind of hard to pick up on camera, but as you're doing stuff, it moves, it shifts after you swirl it. Um, it does it even more so when you have a thicker glue base uh, and you're actually dyeing a disc. It just, it recedes a whole bunch and it ends up giving you tighter swirls. I don't know if you can kind of tell. Of course, I swirl these a little differently, but those are a little tighter, whereas these are like more drawn out and it gives you more waves, I think. So I prefer the clear glue. <clears throat> if you are gonna use the, the white glue, I would recommend um, diluting it down a little bit with water, um, and that will give you a little bit of a runnier mix, uh, very similar to the clear glue, and you'll get some better results. All right, so it is now the next day. Uh, usually, like I said, you wanna let these sit somewhere between eight to 12 hours um, if the dye is directly on the glue like this. Um, if you're gonna be using a lotion or you're using uh, like RIT or some other type of dye, uh, you want to let it set for 24 hours. There's a couple of different techniques that you're going to use um, that we'll, I'll do in other videos that you do want to let sit for 24 hours. But this, 8 to 12 hours, I let this one go a little long uh, just because I slept in. But the reason you want to only go 8 to 12 hours is the colors can start to like wash out and blur together. So you don't want that to happen. All you need is 8 to 12. Uh, so you're going to use some hot water and just rinse it off. And then if you have like a uh, one of these like a non-abrasive uh, Brillo pad scrubber uh, just scrub off the glue you'll have some some glue like accumulate on the edge of the disc and it gets kind of gummy um, just scrub it off it's not going to hurt the disc at all okay fam hey that's a wrap so that's the finished product I I think it ended up looking pretty cool. This is easy, guys. I'm not an artistic person and I can pick up on this, so if I can do it, you can. Uh, not hard at all, just follow the steps that I've done. Um, you can also do with the glue, you can drop the glue down on the bed, or the, the dye on the bed, and then you can blow it around. I'll drop a video or two or some links so you guys can see how to do this. If you want to see me do this, this type of technique, just let me know in the comments and I'll post a video. Word of caution, when you're using your color selection, these this is all just worm dip, and you can just see how it's super bright and like almost tacky. It looks really cool under black light, but it's just too much. So I think if you're gonna use the worm dip, make sure you use it uh, in moderation. This one, the blue in it is actually worm dip, but it's contrasted nicely with the ProChem solution. So just mind your colors, your uh, color choices. Um, you'll also see when you mix certain colors like yellow and purple, it will give you a brown and there's multiple other colors. Make sure you use a color wheel. Uh, get smart on that before you start doing stuff because you don't want to ruin your disc. Uh, that's it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll do another video on the way that I do the like leopard print or cell. Uh, that's going to be the next video. But if you have any other requests, just let me know. Uh, that, so that's it. Um, so until next time, hey, throw far, shoot low, and peace.